Atlanta and Detroit um, feel like two of the most unique offenses, I think, in terms of the NFL at the moment. The Falcons running the ball at an obscene, you know, league, league high rate. Detroit doing some really unique things. Is this a matchup that you're attacking this week? Yeah, and I think, again, this is one of the kind of... There's not too many over-unders over 46% this week. I think you look at what the Falcons did between week one and week two. Bijan Robinson, his rushing attempts jumped from 10 to 19, 6.5 yards per carry last week. So with two games into Bijan Robinson's career, and he scored no less than 20 DraftKings points in each matchup. So I'll definitely be playing him. I completely think he's fine to be playing in cash. I know some people worry about Tyler Algier. I'm not there. I'm all above the Bijan Robinson experience. In terms of other players... I mean, we saw Drake London be slightly more useful last week, and people seem to still believe that the Cal Pitts breakout is coming. But we saw Jonu Smith getting plays designed for him. Jonu Smith getting the same sort of amount of targets as Kyle Pitts last week. And I'm just at a point where I don't know whether Arthur Smith even likes Kyle Pitts, whether that's the type of type and who he really wants, or would he prefer somebody who is going to do a bit more blocking in the running game and all that kind of stuff, which matters to Arthur Smith. On the Detroit side of things, I mean, I made the mistake today of tweeting, which is never a good idea, and a lot of people got mad with me because I pointed out that Jameer Gibbs hasn't played a lot of snaps yet. <laughs> he hasn't played a lot of snaps yet. And yes, he does stand a better chance to play more this week. But Craig Reynolds has filled in over the last few years, a number of times for the Lions when players have gone down, and he's done quite well. I'm not saying he's a good running back. I'm not saying anything like that. But behind this offensive line, the key thing that matters is can you pass protect well so that when they lean into play action, something they do frequently because Jared Goff's so good at it, then you need to be able to pick up blockers. So... I just think that there's a chance Craig Reynolds plays slightly more than people would like. And at 6,600, I think Jameer Gibbs is probably one of the trap plays of the week on DraftKings. Uh, Josh Reynolds at 4,200. I mean, he's been consistent at this point. You can almost put plug and play him in your deep leagues if you need a wide receiver flex play because he is just getting there every week. So I'm completely fine with that. I think at a push, you could possibly play Sam Laporta. But yeah, I think... This is definitely one where last week in the DFS clinic, which is members only video, which we do for our YouTube members, I talked about if you're stacking Jared Goff, you probably want to double stack him because if you're counting on Jared Goff to get there in points, he's probably spread the ball around and there's probably the whole offense has gone off. So if you're looking at it from a DraftKings point of view and wondering who to stack, I'd be taking Jared Goff and then Eamon Rossing Brown and at least Josh Reynolds or Sam Laporta. Yeah, I, I love Reynolds as a sneaky play this week. I think you're talking about Craig Reynolds. You know, our, our friend of the show, Wyatt, pointed out on Twitter this week that people are going to be mad when Craig Reynolds gets more carries than Jameer Gibbs. I think you can guarantee it. I think it's almost 100% happening. You know, at some point, we've got to believe what the Lions are telling us and what they're doing on the field. And I think they love Jamal Gibbs, but I think that they see him as a not on every down back and they're going to sprinkle him in in terms of his usage. Uh YouTube member Paul Pickin in the chat, Colbert's breakout week. I hope so. Maybe I'm too far into the weeds with this. I think the talent is there. He's The usage isn't what we'd want, but it's getting there. He's opening the red zone consistently, and I just think that there is going to be an opportunity that uh, that it will come. But we've got, we've got well, a few gone. I'll let you, I'm I'll just going to say, I mean, Kyle Pitts is 3,900. He's become that punt play tight end now on DraftKings. So if you're looking at it from a daily fantasy perspective, he's not going to get a lot cheaper. It just And people will want to chase that ceiling. But for me, it's a tournament play only. You can't play him in cash games whatsoever because there is no floor with Kyle Pitts. We've been doing this for so long and nothing has materialized. So, yeah, I think... If you want to take shots in tournaments, if you want to go, okay, I'm going to double stack Jared Goff with him and Ross St. Brown, Josh Reynolds, and then I'll bring it back with Kyle Pitts. I absolutely get that because you can probably get to Justin Jefferson and Bijan Robinson and other studs by doing a cheap stack like that. Yeah, and we've got a couple of uh, questions in, in the chat. Uh, so we've got Drew saying, thoughts on the Derek Henry DMP? 
and validity of starting Spears this week in PPR, given the desolate state of running backs? What do you think? Well, I mean, you know your roster better than me, Drew. It's difficult. It's pretty grim out there. I've definitely got some tricky start-sit decisions that I'm kind of going through at the minute. Uh, in terms of Derek Henry, we've seen he's not getting the workload that we kind of expected he might to start the year. And Tajay Spears is averaging 6.9 yards per carry to Henry's 3.6. So when Spears is getting in, he's being really productive with it. So I don't mind it as a punt play if you've got no better options, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see Derek Henry out there still getting sort of 50% of the snaps or whatever. Yeah, I, I love Spears, but it feels... Uh, maybe a little bit too early. I'm sure we'll come on to it when we get to the Titans, but I'm not quite sure I'm fully there on, on starting Spears yet. And then we've got another one of our YouTube members in the chat saying, how much is too much exposure to the Chargers-Vikings game? Well, the one thing to be wary of is the fact that you're not getting this past anybody. Everybody knows this over-under is far bigger than any of the others. So you could, if you wanted to fade this game, it would be a very contrarian move. But if the game becomes a bit of a damp squib, then it's huge leverage on other games. If it's something like, you know, if the Ravens Colts or if, say, the Falcons Lions game turns into one of the shootouts and you've kind of heavily targeted them instead, then you have huge leverage on the field. But in terms of how much exposure is too much to the Chargers Vikings game, I mean, I'll definitely have two or three lineups that revolve around it. Perfect. And if you are in the in the chat watching live, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We're three subscribers away from hitting 1350, which is a, a nice round number. So uh, if you're not already subscribed, hit that button down below and, uh, and do us a solid. Thank you.